You spent 17 years as an elementary and high school mathematics teacher. You received your bachelor's degree in mathematics and physical science from Montclair State College, a master's degree in mathematics from Rutgers University, and a PhD in education from Stanford University. Tell us about Professor Lawrence Thomas. He was my advisor um, at Stanford. I didn't start out with Larry Thomas. I started out with Elliot Eisner, actually. Uh, and my first quarter there, I took uh, four courses, and they all had to fit into the time slot, 1.15 to 5.15, because I had to get home to feed kids, and I couldn't be just, you know, hanging around campus all day. Uh, so I had four wonderful courses, one in psychology with Nate Gage, uh, and sociology with Liz Cohen, and then two philosophy of ed classes with Larry Thomas. And I took those because there were very few requirements uh, in the Stanford program, but people were required to take two philosophy or normative courses. So I took them to get them out of the way. That was my reason for doing it. And by the end of that quarter, Jim and I both remember that philosophy books were beginning to pile up around the house. Um, and by the end of that quarter, I knew that I was going to switch to philosophy. And Elliot was very gracious about it. I mean, he and I remained good friends for forever. Um, but that's when I made that change. And I tried hard to stay away from math education, even though Ed Beagle was there at the time, doing wonderful work with SMSG. But see, I wanted to get away from that for a while. I wanted to fill in all these gaps in my education. So, uh, <laughs> but the funny part of it is that, of course, I had to do a lot of work in the philosophy department at Stanford. And if you think you can get away without math in that philosophy department, forget it, you know, <laughs> because it's highly analytical and logical. Mm -hmm. And so it was that my background was an enormous help to me because I had never had any philosophy courses before. Mm -hmm. And I love them, so there we are. Tell us about Michael S. Katz and your time together at Stanford. Um, Michael and I were uh, graduate students together at Stanford. We didn't have a lot of time to just um, hang out because, for obvious reasons, I you had ten kids. Couldn't spend all that. Much, <laughs> I couldn't spend all that much time That's on five campus. Five times as many as I have. <laughs> but we had uh, social events at at Larry's house and uh, uh, occasional. Uh, area meetings and that sort of thing. And so Michael and I got to know each other pretty well. Uh, but he I was telling Audrey earlier that uh, I went through my graduate studies rather rapidly. I did it all in seven quarters. And uh, I finished my coursework and my dissertation in the same quarter. And this bothered Michael quite a bit. He went in to talk to our advisor and he said, how can this be? You know, how, how, how can she do this? And Larry just smiled and said, well, you know, she's got the skills to do it. So then Michael decided he was going to get through his, too, and stop hanging around. And so he did. And we've been very good friends ever since. He says that you and he were virtually the only two graduate students at Stanford who did not do dissertations on the work of John Dewey. I, you know, that's probably true. <laughs> what did you study for your dissertation? Um, yeah, this, this is a good story in itself. The, uh, the title of the dissertation, I think, is Constructivism as a Theory of Teaching. Now, this was um, 1972 that I was writing it. Um, and so it's mainly Piagetian constructivism with a little tad of social constructivism, but mostly Piagetian constructivism. And uh, when the dissertation was finished, uh, Lee Kronbach was not on my committee, but he talked to people a little bit about it. And he said, well, this, this is just fine, but it's not the wave of the future. I think it was the only time in his whole life that Lee Kronbach was ever wrong on anything. <laughs> so, uh. Linda Stone, tell us about Linda. About Linda. Mm -hmm. Okay, Linda was um, <clears throat> one of my graduate students. She probably holds the all-time record for the number of courses taken. I couldn't 
get her to stop taking courses. Um, and uh, uh, she and I became very close. This, by the way, for those of you who are graduate students, is something to look forward to. One of the most wonderful things about doctoral studies is that the outcome is often lifelong friendships, lifelong treasured friendships. Uh, and that happened in this case. So. Uh, the kids consider Linda one of the family. Uh, she's a little too old to be my child, so we call her little sister. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us about your broccoli soup. Broccoli soup. <laughs> this had to have come from Linda. Everybody who comes to the house in the summer <coughs> wants cream of broccoli soup. It's our own broccoli. I uh, grow quite a lot of it, and then uh, cook it and grind it up and freeze it so I have it ready to make broccoli soup. And it's the specialty of the house, so everybody likes broccoli soup, so I have to cook it. She mentioned that, and also your not-so-secrets, that you still use 3 by 5 cards to organize your references and do all of your writing longhand on paper. Yeah, I still do all my writing uh, longhand, uh, but since I've retired, I have to put it all in the computer myself. I mean, I usually I had a secretary all those years to do it, so I didn't have to do it. Um, but I, I'm a pretty fast typist. One thing I'm so grateful for is that I did take typing in high school. Uh, and the school principal was annoyed with me for that. Uh, because well, I had five majors plus the typing. He said, well, but you should have been taking another whatever it was. But typing, I'm very glad I took. Those you had five majors. What were those majors? <coughs> hmm? You had five majors? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah. Look, this was a small high school. Mm. And you remember in the Conan studies, he said, no, we've got to have larger high schools so that we can provide all these special courses. Well, I had four years of English, four years of math, four years of science, four years of history, and four years of Latin. And I had three years of public speaking and a year of typing. Oh, wow. In just a small high school. So it can be done. It's not, you don't have to have a great big high school to do it. Sure. Of course, years later, I found out that my teachers didn't know as much as I thought they knew when <laughs> I was in school. Do you know what I found out, actually? I found out that the Latin teacher had a, 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 what do you call it when people are kind of cheating? Well, in her desk drawer, she had the translation. I didn't know that. I mean, four years, and I didn't catch on to that. Someone had to tell me afterward. And here we're going through Caesar's Gallic Wars and Cicero and Virgil, and she was cheating. <laughs> Imagine that. On that note, tell us about the time that you took your kids to Star Wars. <laughs> Did you do what? To the Star Wars movie. Oh, the Star Wars movie. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm trying to block on some of these things. <laughs> <coughs> we, we wanted to go to see, you told on that one. <laughs> um, we wanted to go to see Star Wars. Uh, and when we got to the theater, there were no more tickets for Star Wars. So we were disappointed, but we bought tickets for something else. I don't remember what. But when we got in, I noticed that people were just going in to the Star Wars theater. They had just emptied out one batch. And so I said to the kids, let's go, let's go, come on. And they said, mother, I said, come on. And we, we went in, and we got very good seats, and it was lovely. So. <laughs> but it was, it was, they were right, it was very uncharacteristic of me, but we did that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Back to the cheating? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steve Thornton, tell us about your relationship with Steve. Uh, Steve was uh, one of my graduate students also. He was actually uh, Dick Gross's, but um, he became more, more mine than Dick's, I guess. Uh, and, he, and he started his graduate, he was very young when he started his graduate studies, and uh, uh, Australian, uh, and he has become part of the family as well. 
So I'm very proud of him. He heads up the, uh, the Department of Curriculum and Instruction at the University of South Florida. And Linda is full professor now at the University of North Carolina. So He calls himself your 16th or 17th son, and Linda calls herself your 15th daughter. They well. believe that they're part of your family. What he says he admires most about you is that the continuity of caring, which you write about, you live. 